Come, my father wills you to see the other place. Immediately I had dread and did not want to go. Jesus looked at me and said, There is no disobedience in heaven, and I was ready to go. I knew that because I was with him, I would be perfectly all right. Jesus picked me up and carried me like a baby. There was no give to his body, hard as steel, all powerful arms, strongest being in the universe. Instantly, we descended into a gray, nasty stench like a rotting carcass. I buried my face in his gown. You will not want to see, and I was scared. I had both arms around Jesus' arm. We descended to a flat area. I was at the gates of total destruction. Everything that heaven is, hell is the opposite. They were gates as big as the gates I saw in heaven. I remember stairs, and there were hideous beings as tall as the angels that guard the gates of heaven. They were grotesque, some cartoon figures of demons approach how hideous these creatures were. When they saw the master, they screamed in horror. And there were flames of punishment. I felt the doom and despair. I heard people crying out. Demons take people and torture them to the same level of pain they are in. People are naked. There was no one there who was not old enough to know what sin was. There were no babies. Jesus told me to tell people what I saw. I want you to tell others of this place and warn them that unless they are washed in my blood, unless they are born again, this is where they will spend eternity. There were demons all around, screaming, screaming, screaming at the very presence of Jesus. They could not stand to be in his presence. They would scream and run in terror. There were people begging and pleading with him to get them out of there. He would not hear them because their judgment was fixed. I cannot describe everything I saw because it makes me violently ill. I don't want to remember, but I can tell you there's absolute horror. When you die, you have a spiritual body. The spiritual body that you have has exact properties that your physical body has when you're alive. But you are a spirit being, yet all physical senses are there. I saw people there that were walking skeletons with flesh of some kind hanging off of them rotting off of them, maggots, and the smell was unbreathable. Serpents eat and digest parts of people, and the people are restored, and it happens again. Demons tear people apart. I saw people ripped apart. Parts of their bodies were hanging on boulders and rocks, and the demons would take the parts and eat them and pass them through. And then the body was whole again for the process to be repeated. There were bunches of people in small cages that were on fire. People are put in small burning cages that are dipped in a lake of fire, but the body is not consumed. The bodies are never consumed. They were half skeleton, half beings. Demons poured liquid fire on people. There were what was like coal pits burning. People had cancer with all its pain and suffering forever. One man had a rotting arm. It took a hundred years to rot off. Then it was restored so it could rot off again. There was a man with part of his head blown off from war. He had to keep looking for the rest of his head. I saw the lake of fire with people in it bobbing around. Every torment you can imagine is multiplied a million times. There are degrees of punishment in hell. Those who were punished the greatest knew the most, and they didn't do what they should have done. I thought of Hitler, and I thought of God's justice. There's a hole. In the bottom of the hole, there are chained demons. When they saw Jesus, they screamed out, We're coming to get you. Jesus said, No, you won't. I pleaded, Please, I don't want any more. There are pits of hell that are now empty, empty waiting for whole nations. It is dark, and there are demons and serpents everywhere. The demons inflict more pain than they're going through themselves. Isaiah 66, verse 24. And they will go out and look upon the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. Their worm will not die, nor will their fire be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. NIV. Then I saw the place reserved for the devil and his angels, flaming, slimy fire over his head for a thousand years. The lake of fire had depths that got worse and worse and worse. 
Son, you have fulfilled what God wanted. We ascended to the platform again. I asked, Who am I going to tell? Tell others about a place called heaven and the other place, the place of separation. He took his hands and turned my face up into his, one hand on either side of my face. He bent my neck upward so I had to look directly into his face. He said, Don't ever forget how much I love you and what I have done for you. Never forget how much I love those that you are going back to and the place I have prepared for them and how much I love them. Jesus said, You are going back. I sighed, and Jesus rebuked me. The will of my Father is never grievous. Stand to your feet. You must go back. You will come back to heaven. You will have angelic visits. Then Jesus hugged me, and suddenly my body was full of pain. There was a sheet over my face. I could feel my bones knitting together. I was being healed, and I heard a voice. He's been dead all these hours. I could feel my left wrist where the bone had been protruding. I could feel it popping into place and healing up. It is about time to embalm him. I remember sitting up and saying, I ain't dead yet. Someone hollered in the hall. He's alive. That dead man is alive. I remember a doctor coming in saying, I pronounced him dead, and he's dead. But I was sitting up. Other doctors and nurses came in, and I began to tell the story of where I had been and what had happened. People were weeping. Doctors said, This must be a miracle of God. Since then, I continue to have visitations of the Lord. Since that time, God has poured out His Spirit in my life, and I have literally seen the dead raised. I continue to see the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk. Every service I am in, I see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and God performing the miraculous. I tell this story, and when I do, we have a great number who want to get right with God. I would. I would want to go to a place called heaven. I continue to have angelic visits, but the two angels that escorted me through heaven, I've never seen again, that I know of, but I have had numerous other angelic visitations. And God is much more rich and much more free to me. I have a depth of God in my life now to where I never knew was possible. It just seems like this type of revelation is more than any man could ever have. This type of experience with God would seem like one out of a hundred or once in a lifetime. But it now happens to me on a daily basis. Every day I hear the audible voice of God in some manner. Every day I get to see the angels of God. And I have seen Jesus on numerous occasions. In revival meetings, the angels are visible to me. The cloud of glory is visible to me. The sickness and diseases in people's bodies are visible to me. The demons that afflict them are visible to me. The glory that comes upon them when God heals them is also visible to me. God has truly poured out upon me a prophetic ministry of signs and wonders and miracles. And I am to tell the story that Jesus is coming soon. He told me before he sent me back that I would come back. And when I did, I had to tell his people to get ready. These are the words of the Lord. He said, Prepare yourselves and get ready because I am coming back soon at a time when people don't think I am coming back. I am coming back. He is coming after his sons and his daughters. And he is coming after his servants. He is coming after all of us that we might go with Him to that place called heaven. Are you ready? Are you really ready?